the client. I have chosen to complete a review of Mr. Sims Sweet Shop website. Mr. Sims is a franchise of an old style high street sweet shop, displaying traditional sweets and is a market leader in iconic confectionery. The brand aims to reinforce nostalgia and target young sweet lovers. I am reviewing this site because at first glance it looks clumsy and outdated. Introduction Mr. Sims franchise aims to give a memorable and inspirational shopping experience. However, their website does not reflect this. I will be discussing the usability issues within their website. Outputs Based upon the user research I obtain, I will be able to produce recommendations on how to solve the usability problems of the website. Goals From gaining user research, the goal is to identify user opinions and behaviours. Gaining insight into whether the site is user friendly, does the site meet expectations and does the site accomplish their user goals. Initial user research. A five second test aims to measure what information users take away from a site within the first five seconds of viewing. When asked what's your first impressions of the brand, only 37.5% recognise the brand. When asked what's your first impressions of the site, 65% said the design was too busy or distracting. When asked what grabs your attention, only 25% mentioned the actual products they are trying to sell. When asked what products can you recall, 75% couldn't recall a particular product. User profiles. Young teens buying sweets for themselves, interested in various types of sweets, spending time browsing through different options of flavours and treats. Young adults looking for more niche luxury sweets with more disposable incomes. Parents buying confectionery gifts with little free time to go out to the shops. Expert review. During this expert review, I will give a cognitive walkthrough and heuristic evaluation of the Mr. Sims website. During this review, I will highlight problems and discuss the user-centered design process. Cognitive walkthrough. I will place myself in the position of the user and complete numerous tasks. The purpose of this is to detect any problems a user would have when completing these tasks. I completed the cognitive walkthrough at home in my lounge where it was quiet on a 13 inch MacBook Pro, which should be sufficient for a setting. The first task I set out to complete was to find some classic sweets that were blackjacks without using the search bar. This would be a simple, generic task completed by their target audience. The home page. The rotating banner is rather substantial in size and is rather distracting from the main call to action, which is, which is shop now. If the banner was reduced in size, I believe the call to action would stand out more and more bestseller products could be bought onto this page. The colour of the website is rather drab. As I understand they have used the wooden texture and brown to convey tradition, there is nothing aesthetically pleasing about this site. With reference to UX Planet, contrast is imperative which seems to be something that Mr Sims site lacks. For example, you cannot see the arrow sometimes to rotate the image carousel. The buttons are light grey on a white background and hovering over the basket you cannot see the writing at all, which provides bad contrast. According to UX Planet, colour also conveys emotion. Therefore, once an item is added to the basket, it will benefit from this button changing in colour to show that an action has been taken. Towards the bottom of the home page, there is a rotating carousel of bestsellers, which is a good persuasive tool. However, the carousel actually rotates on its own without clicking the control arrows, which is rather questionable. Also on the carousel, nothing is aligned and the font sizes are small, making poor usability on this section. Further down the page there is a map for store location. Although this doesn't work and takes up more unnecessary space, portraying an unprofessional image of the company. There is a subscribe section which can be beneficial to helping retaining users and customers. However, this section is also oversized and draws attention away from other key aspects of the site. When conducting a search for blackjacks, my first thought is to go to the shop heading, which is perfectly fine. However, under this section, there is no obvious category to look for the sweets, as I am conflicted whether to look under the novelty sweet section or the pick and mix one. Ultimately, the category titles are too vague. However, I click retro novelties in hope to apply filters to narrow down my search on the next page. So here I am on the next page, and on my left I have a list, although it's more of the same categories that featured in the shop drop down menu. There is one filter which is price. This is not the tools I was hoping for to narrow down my specified search. 
With reference to Nielsen Norman Group, filters are important in narrowing down a specif spe specified choice and when designed well, create a positive feeling of choice and control for the user. Realising with my own common sense and no indication from the website, I realised the products are listed alphabetically, so I skip to the third page and luckily find what I'm looking for. However, if I was looking for something further down the alphabet, you can see I would have to skip through pages and pages just to find what I'm looking for. Happy Path. Happy Path should be the home page, shop, pick and mix, page two, add to basket, which is five steps. The actual steps it takes are seven. However, there is much longer time to scroll through options, numerous pages, and deciding what categories to choose. This takes 56 seconds. However, taking the happy path wouldn't even take half this amount of time. Heuristic evaluation. With reference to Nielsen's 10 usability heuristics, which aim to identify working usability guidelines, and also with reference to the traffic light method, highlighting the level of distress on usability problems. The first problem notice refers to Nielsen's consistency and standards guidelines. Consistency is wrong on a large scale. The text alignment is not apparent on a number of pages and features no spacing between words. All this leads to an unprofessional and clumsy website. The second problem relates to matching between systems and the real world. As on the products page there is little or no information about the suites. This page looks broken as the content is awkwardly placed and the price looks small and insignificant. There are no keywords or phrases for SEO and it all seems the suggestion of related products has no relation to the selected product giving false information. Nielsen's aesthetic and minimalist design guidelines state that information should be relevant and valuable. However, in some cases, this site takes minimal to a new extreme by providing large spaces in between content on the home page, leaving unwanted space. The careers link simply doesn't work and there should either be fixed or removed. The store locator page doesn't work as it comes up with an error. Plus, it's debatable whether this is even useful to have on the home page anyway. Guerrilla testing. Before testing users, I had them fill out a consent form. I used five users, as according to Nielsen, this is the desired amount of users. They each match target users and their profiles. They were recorded at their home in a quiet space, and each task was performed using a 13-inch MacBook Pro. This would give a true reflection of competing tasks. These tasks were carefully selected in order to show everyday basic interactions with the site, in order to judge the usability from a non-biased perspective, and give a true representation of the tasks. Number one. Find the Elizabeth Shaw box of mint chocolates without using the search bar. So there's nothing on the icons on the side that's got helping me because they're evidently not there. Mint. And there are 135 results, but I'm going to just read through them and see which one I can find. Doesn't appear to be any Elizabeth Shaw under there. Um, and add to basket. Task two: create a pick and mix that includes items of apple bonbons, black currant bonbons, fizzy rainbow bites, and add them to basket. That's fine. I can see apple bonbons, but there's no photograph. Rock stock. So I'm looking for black currant bonbons. There's 25 pages and 145 results. So I was out of stock. Can't do it. But you get to the bottom and you can't actually read anything at all. Three. If you had a nut allergy, could you search for a chocolate bar that doesn't contain nuts? Uh, I'm just seeing what filters I can put on it. I might have to just read what each chocolate bar has, because I can't see anything. I don't think there's any way of filtering it. Things on the side, there is nothing at all again that says anywhere anything about nuts. I would say, yes, the task is impossible if it doesn't tell me whether something contains nuts or not. Again, the site not having filters to refine a search proved difficult in the user's searches. 
When asked to find a specific item, users were worried about looking through multiple pages just to find what they were looking for. Ultimately, this promotes bad usability and is very time consuming. Naturally, to avoid looking through more and more pages, the users tried to search for any possible filters. Am I honestly going to have to sort through 24 pages of it? When looking for pick and mix, this task also proved difficult, with text being squashed together. For example, the black crunk bonbons, this made it easy to overlook the product and hard to distinguish them. All the writing on the top line just completely runs into each other, so you can't really see what you're buying very well. The fizzy rainbow bites were out of stock, but did not show this until they were clicked on. And of course, with there being no refining filters, the search took a lot longer than it should have. Users also found that the task is difficult as there were chocolates in the sweets category and vice versa, meaning unviable content, making it harder to find the product you wanted. When adding products to the basket, our users also wouldn't be able to actually purchase the products as the contrast on the checkout buttons is very poor, leaving them unable to distinguish what button to press next. The last task our users found impossible there is no category, filter or obvious descriptions to purchase chocolate bars without nuts, again signifying a poor design for a common task. Overall we received feedback such as, I wouldn't use this website again and I want to change websites. The site left the users frustrated, confused and second guessing the website. Page 5 of 23 and I've just found Elizabeth Shaw. Consequently, being unable to complete two out of three tasks that were set. A, B testing. Firstly, we set out goals including reduce the number of headings within the navigation. Hypothesis, I think that reducing the headings will make the process of finding products easier for customers and increase the number of sales. Second goal, improve the visibility and ease of checking out. Hypothesis, I think this will make it easier for customers to purchase products they want, which will increase their number of sales. Goal 3. Get more visitors to use the store locator page. Hypothesis, I think that this will help customers find the nearest shops, which will increase the number of customers going into stores and purchasing products. We then tested the standard pages against newly developed ones, in line with the goals, and to benefit the usability of the site. We gained 30 responses on each recommendation to gain feedback. 94% of people responded with using the new out of stock label compared with the old read more one. On the navigation test, headings were added with the column to distinguish category and refine choices when searching for specific suites. The alteration gained a 97% response in favour of the change. The difference in fonts we suggested didn't receive a large favoured response which mean that this change wouldn't be significant. The new buttons we added in a shade of green with bolder text to provoke a more persuasive call to action received a 90% response in favour of the new version. Developing added colours to the website design could mean better contrast, more signifying features and enhance the minimal design. 73% of responses felt confident in adding the new green to the colour scheme. Recommendations. As you can see I have implemented the changes I have spoken about. Whilst only simple changes, these would ensure better usability in the site and make those simple tasks easy for users rather than them being timely or impossible. Of course more could still be done to modernise the site, however I believe these changes to be sufficient for a short term solution based upon feedback and testing.